Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to another video in my channel. So today's tutorial is going to be totally different than what I've done before in my channel. And today we're going to be building a Chrome extension. So this is a tool that I've been working on for the last, I don't know, a couple of days now. And um, what I've come up with is a knowledge base and website summarizer. So just to understand it and how it works. So I've created this extension where you can install it on your Chrome browser and, it, and you can pin it to your toolbar. So it looks like this. So you can go to any website you can go to Hacker News and find an article. Let's say I found this article called the beginning of FM radio broadcasting. Let's go and actually it's, yeah, we can go and you choose this one. But this could work for any web pages that you want to uh, summarize and also save it as part of your knowledge base. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. The way it works is you can pin this extension on your toolbar and you can click on it and it will give you these options to summarize the page. And you can also summarize and save. And there's a little option here which allows you to enter your uh, API key for your either OpenAI or Straco. Uh, so we're going to make it as flexible as possible so you can use any type of uh, L that you, you want uh, to summarize this page. And you can also enter your webhook endpoint. In this case, I'm using late node for it. So I'm going to be teaching you guys how to set that up later on as long as it, it follows the input parameters and also the output it's going to work for this extension so i'm going to be showing you guys how it works but to start off with you're going to have to configure the api endpoint which accepts and will do the work of analyzing the page content and it's going to give you back the summary and also the api key here is specific to since we're using straco to uh, summarize uh, this page we're going to be using gpt uh, for mini for this tutorial, but this will allow you to distribute this Chrome extension and configure it for different accounts. And that will be using uh, this key and this endpoint. So this will be a very configurable. So we can go ahead and save this. And then you can see here that the settings has been configured now for this extension. So now we can go back into our article here. You can do a summary from here. You can also summarize and save, which will it's a shortcut to get you to this toolbar, which is the entry point to this Chrome extension. You can summarize it or you can summarize and save. Let's go ahead and show you how it, the summarize page works. So it's making a call to the webhook that set up. It's, it's going to give you like an outline and key highlights of what the article is about. So you don't have to go read through the whole website as it is. So it's going to give you like a breakdown. And then another cool feature as well is I set up a Notion page here. So every time we do a summarize and save, it's going to create a new page inside of this. Let's go back and click on that extension again, and let's click on the summarize and save and see how that works. So this takes a little bit of, of time as it goes through uh, the back end, and it's going to go and extract the, the information from this article, and it's going to go and, and create a screenshot of this page and it's going to save it into a PDF as well. So it's the same output from the previous one. The only difference is it adds a little bit of functionality to it. So instead of just giving you the summary, it's also going to go and save the article in the back end. So if you go back into your notion, you see here that the summary for early FM radio has been added. So if you go here, it's the same highlights that you've seen in the Chrome extension. And the cool thing about this is it saves the document for the PDF into Google Drive and you can view it straight and examine it. You can see here that it's being saved as a PDF. There's also a web capture here, which creates a snapshot of the page. It's going to go ahead and screen capture that page and it's going to save it as an image. So you can download this. Once you download it, it's going to give you this. this. Go ahead and take a look. I think it's still loading, which still looks weird, but right now it's still loading. You can see here that some examples here of what the summary looks like. So I did a screen capture of Save Day, which is a deal in AppSumo right now. So you can see here this uh, web, website capture is how it looks like. Now you can see here that it was able to capture the website. So we're using late note as a backend. I'm going to be showing you guys how to set this up in a little bit. But for the image and the PDF generation, we're using a tool called Markup. Go, which is also available in 
app Sumo right now. There's an API that allows you to convert an HTML to an image, uh, and allows you to convert one type of media to another. So HTML to image, markdown to image, URL to image, which is what we're going to be using for this demo. So which we're going to provide it a URL and it's going to convert it to an image that we can save into Google Drive and we can link it to a Notion page. And there's a bunch of other ones here as well. If you want to convert an HTML to PDF, a URL to PDF. So we're going to be using Markdown to PDF in this demo as well. So you can see here that there's a bunch of examples of how to use this. They have an SDK or an API that you can use to create your HTML and convert it to, to an image. So there's a bunch of examples here. It's a pretty cool app. I, there's also some templates and this thing called Magic, Magic here, which allows you to create and dynamically create these images. This one has been, been created using Magic URL. So using code, you can pass in some parameters and they, it will build up this page for you depending on what you set up. So it reminds me of like Robbly, but it's like an HTML where you can provide an input and then you can add some placeholders somewhere in the HTML document. It's going to be replaced when you call this URL, so which is pretty neat. So that's some use case that you can use it for. You can use it for, for certificate completion since you can produce some PDF from images. There's also some other ones here as well where you can tweak it. They have a playground where you can play around with how things work and then you can keep track of your usage. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to set this all up in late node. So let's talk about what we're going to be needing to fulfill this Chrome extension that we're going to be building today. So you're going to be needing a Google Drive account. I created a subfolder here within my main drive. It's called articles and knowledge. So this is where we're going to be storing the screenshot and then the PDF that we got from the Chrome extension tool. And then the next one is I created a Notion page here. I called it website summaries. This is where we're going to be dropping the new pages for this. And we're going to be inserting the new page here and be creating all these different elements as part of this Notion page. So that's going to be the second requirement. And then the third re requirement requires a Straco API key. So if you're using Straco or OpenAI, choose Straco with OpenAI or OpenRouter if you want to. So I'm just using Straco in this tutorial. And then the next one is we're going to be using Markup. We're going to be needing the API from Markup Go to convert the URL to an image, like creating a screenshot of that URL. And then the next one is we're converting a Markdown to PDF. So we're taking the response summary from the LLM and we're taking that Markdown, we're converting it to PDF, and then we're uploading it into Google Drive. And then we're referencing that URL from Google Drive into the Notion page. So that's the other requirement that we're going for the tutorial. And then lastly, we're going to be using Lightnode for this specific one. We're going to be creating a webhook, which I'm going to be showing you guys in a little bit how it's going to work. And then for the SVG for the Chrome extension, you can go to any of the website that gives you an image. So I went to this website called SVG repo, and then I was just able to find an image. And then lastly, for styling the Chrome extension, we're going to be using Tailwind CSS to make it a little bit prettier. So if you go to extension, you can see here that it's a little bit more styled. We have the icons here on the top, which are SVGs. So you can use one of these websites to give you an SVG, for instance, like this one right here. And you can just take it and copy it and then use it as an SVG that you can render on the Chrome extension. So that's that for the requirement for this. So I want to quickly just go through the late node setup here for the webhook. So I'm going to just go through the overview first, and then we're going to go and build this whole automation step by step later on, just to give you a high level here on what the webhook does. So it's going to be triggered on webhook. That's what we're going to be adding here. This accepts five parameters, the title, the content of the website, the URL, and some other information, which I'm going to be showing you guys in a little bit. We're going to be accepting some information here from the Chrome extension. Uh, we're going to be validating whether the API key that we receive is valid. We're going to be checking here. We set up a filter. If it's empty, if there's no API key that's being passed in as part of the parameters, we're going to go and send back an HTTP status of 400. And that's going to terminate that, that whole automation. But if it, we have a valid API key, we're going to go and proceed on, on the bottom part of the automation. So the first part here is we're going to go and add a code here, which has this prompt 
let's go ahead and go to full screen so you can see it so it's a prompt right here and then we're passing in the content that we received from the chrome extension which is going to be the content of the website and this is going to go ahead and make a request to straco so this accepts an api key which is going to be we're providing here so once we get the actual summary of the article there's going to be two routes to this it's going to be top and the bottom so remember from the chrome extension where we have two types of action if you go back into the website there's two types of action one is to summarize the page and the second is to summarize and save so those are going to be the two actions that we're interested in so if you go back into late node so the top part will only execute if the action is equals to summarize and save so this is the summarize and save action and then the bottom will always execute so this is going to be sending back the response of the summary as part of this property of message and the second part will just execute simultaneously while this is happening so it doesn't really wait for it to perform all these actions on the top so this whole, whole thing is happening simultaneously top and bottom and the top part is only happening if it's a summary and save so the first part into this the top part of this when the action is summaries and save is we're going to generate an image from the url so we're going to be using markup go for that we have some code here which i'm going to be showing you guys how to write later on and then it's going to give you an image and then the second part is we're going to be converting the markdown into image i believe the type of this is a pdf actually it's markdown convert convert we're going to be accepting yeah so we're going to be converting the image or markdown to pdf that's what actually what we're doing here go and save this and then we're going to be uploading the, the document uh, from uh, the pdf into google docs and then we're also going to be retrieving that metadata for that pdf so we can get the id that we can reference in the notion uh, page and then the next one is we're going to be uploading the screenshot so the screenshot would be the general image uh, step right here of number 10 and then we're going to be uploading it in the step and then the next one is similar to the previous one where we're going to get the screenshots metadata we just need the id of that file so that later on when we add a new page in notion we can reference it here so we have this url which we're then going to be setting it into the view here and then that's going to be the file id in the middle and the same thing with the web capture where we're going to be setting the website screenshot ID and then we're going to be concatenating it as part of this URL for Google Drive. And then we're going to be embedding the source URL, which is going to be coming from the body of the request. So that's going to be that for the late node. This is going to be what we're going to be building later on. So let's go ahead and build the Chrome extension uh, from, from start to finish. So starting with the icons. So I found this website called icons.com, free icons right here. And then anything that doesn't have this metal on it, I think it, it should be free. So you can go ahead and click on it and then you can copy, copy the SVG. So we want to copy the SVG and that's what we're going to be using to for the icons on the extension. So if you go up here, you can see that the icon next to the name of the tab itself, that would be the code for the SVG. So you can go ahead and use that for this uh, part of the tab. And then you can also use these icons right here for the icons. So if you go back here, you can see that there's this little icon here. If you go and right click this, you can see that there's an icon next to it. So the context menu has this icon as well. You can use an SVG such as the one from this page or any SVGs that really they can think of. And then you can convert this to a PNG. So and you can attach that as part of the Chrome extension. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and create a blank directory. So I'm inside of this Chrome demo. The only thing that I want that I have here is the single icon.png, which we're going to be using as the icon for the Chrome extension. And that's about it. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to do an open to terminal and we're going to be opening up this folder inside of a uh, VS code. So it's going to be blank at this point. So it's going to be just the images with the icon here. Let's go ahead and close this. Before we actually go ahead and proceed this, I'm going to go ahead and, and give you a rundown of what constitutes uh, a Chrome extension. You can see here that there's a background, there's a manifest, there's also the content, and then there's a pop-up with certain actions. So we're not going to be covering the content today. We're going to be co focusing on the background manifest and the pop-up. So the background is the, the background worker that is running constantly in the background for Chrome extension. Uh, you can also run and define certain things such as the context menus. That's where you can add it in the background. 
and in the manifest that's going to be the definition for the whole chrome extension the name of the chrome extension which background file you should be using the content file and also the pop-up and certain things such as the version of it so this gives you like a little definitions here the content script and the pop-up so the content script is anything that runs in the context of the web page the purpose is to manipulate the document object model of the web page and then the next one with the pop-up so the pop-up is when i click on this right here so you can see here that there's different tabs on this pop-up and then the next one would be the background script so this is like a long running task so the purpose of this is to handling events such as actions so if i go to any of the web page let's say i go, that I go to this article when i right click on this page this is the context menu so this is provided by the background file which is going to be adding these three different actions so when you click on this one right here it's going to go and activate the pop-up for this extension so we're not going to go and elaborate too much on the code but when i add the code i'm going to give you some explanation as to what the code is about so you can understand it a little bit but feel free to leave it in the comments if you want a bit more in-depth tutorial on coding maybe i can do more uh, coding tutorials in the future but let's go ahead and build this uh, Chrome extension, right? So I have an empty folder here with a single folder images, and then inside of inside of that would be a single uh, PNG icon. So the first things uh, that we're going to be needing as part of this Chrome extension is we're going to be adding a manifest file, which is going to be in the form of uh, JSON. We're going to call it manifest.json, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy some code here, and I'm going to go ahead and go through all the different things here. So version. Three is the latest version of the manifest. So, so we're going to go and stick to the latest version. The name is going to be the name of the Chrome extension and the version would be the version of the Chrome extension. So if you decide later on you want to release version two, then you're going to change this to version two. This is going to be our first Chrome extension. We're going to be adding it as version one. And then description would be the description of the Chrome extension, just in case later on you want to publish it into the Chrome store, I have a description there. And then the permissions is going to be the different permission that is required for the Chrome extension to, to run. We're going to require the active tab and tabs as well as scripting and storage. Since we're, we're going to be persisting the article inside of the Chrome storage, we're going to be using the, the storage permission. And then this is the part where we need to define the other files, right? Such as the background service. So we've defined it inside of this background and then service worker. So we're just declaring a background.js. That's going to be the file responsible for the background service worker. And so for the host permission, we're allowing it to operate on all URLs. This is just a catch alls for all the URLs. And then the action would be what type of action we're going to be using. So when you click on the extension, which file is going to be the default for that pop-up? So in our case, we're going to be adding a popup.html, which is going to be referencing a popup.js where we're going to be adding the code to run and operate on that popup. So we're going to be going through that in a little bit. The default icon is pointing to the images icon, which we have here inside of our project already. And then the options page. So if you right click on the extension, you can go to the options, which is the default is going to go to uh, extensions. And then this is going to be the ID and then the options.html where the option lives. Alternatively, you can also click on it and then you click on this options and it's, it's, it's going to take you to the same page. So th this is the page that we're defining for the options.html. So going back into the manifest here, once we got the options page, uh, the last one is the icons. So same thing, we're going to be adding the images icon.png. So this is for the, the action that we've defined here for the, the icon PNG and the icon would be the actual icon for the, the extension and also the context menu. Once we get the manifest done, so it's pointing to the files that we need for this project. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the options. So there's two files that we need to make the options. One is the H options.html and then one is going to be the options. Let's go ahead and copy and paste the HTML. So it's just a basic HTML page. We got the meta uh, tags on the top. The Inside of the header, you're going to get the title and the link. We're going to be referencing the Tailwind uh, 2.2 from CDN. It doesn't really matter what version it is. I, I believe it's three, version 3 right now, but we're just going to go ahead and go with the 2. So we can add some styling into the options and the various pages inside of our Chrome extension. And then we're defining some custom styling here inside of the styling block for the body. So we're changing the font family to this and then the margin 
220 pixel and then we're adding some style for the labels as well and then we're adding this options.js which we added here we're talking about later on how that works but we're referencing the script for options.js defer means that we want to make sure that the entire page loads before we load this uh, options.js file all right so inside of this body of html we're declaring uh, a div tag which we've set some classes so we want to make sure that it's set to auto a background is white certain parameters such as what the shadow looks like some padding and then we're adding uh, two fields one is for the api endpoint and one is for the api key the next one is going to be the button and the status so let's go ahead and go back into the chrome extension real quick so i'm going to give you an idea so we got the header and then they got two fields api endpoint and then we got the input where we can put the api endpoint here for the webhook and then the next one would be the API key. This would be the key for your LLM. So if you're using Claude or OpenAI, you can define it here. In our case, we're using uh, Straco's um, API. So we, we need to provide um, Straco's API key. And this is gonna be the save. So when you click save, it's gonna give you this uh, display on the bottom where it says setting save. So that's where the status is. But it's shown at the bottom where it says it's set to text of green of, of 600. And then there's, some, there's a little bit of um, margin right here and a text too small. The button right here will save the information and persist it to Chrome storage, which we're going to be talking about next. So as far as the options uh, at JS, let's go ahead and add some code into this. So the first line here or the first block that we're adding here is we're going to be referencing the save button and we're going to be adding an event listener for the click. So every time you click on the save button, it's going to go and execute this function right here or this block of code. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be referencing the two inputs, which is going to be API input and then the API key, which is these two right here. And then we're just going to be grabbing and extracting the value. So that, that value is, and then we're going to be calling this Chrome storage .sync .set. So for this, we're going to be setting the API endpoint, which is going to be setting it into the API endpoint. And then the API key is going to be set to API key. So later on, when we refresh that page, if you go back here and refresh the settings menu, that thing is persisted once we save it. We don't have to keep setting the API key and the API endpoint every time we want to use the extension. So that's exactly what we're doing. And then we're setting the status into settings that save. And then we're, we're setting up a timeout here. So after two seconds, it's going to go and that message is going to go ahead and disappear. And then the next part of this options.js is we're going to be on the load event. So when the page loads, we're just going to go and retrieve those values and populate the API endpoint and the API key into those text boxes or this input box. If the endpoint is available, we're going to go and set it to that endpoint. If the API key is available, we're going to go and set that into this API key. Hopefully that's pretty straightforward. And then the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the background.js. We're going to go ahead and add a new file here. I want to make sure that I'm on the top background.js and I'm going to go and add a little bit of code here. All right. So we're adding some listeners here. So we're going to be creating first when the Chrome extension gets installed. As soon as the Chrome extension gets installed, we're going to go ahead and fire this up. So we're going to be adding these three actions as our context menus as part of this Chrome extension. So when we go back into the page, if you go back here to any of the pages, if you go ahead, go ahead and right click, these three context menus right here are going to be added as part of this Chrome extension, right? So you're going to see here that there's a summary page and then there's going to be the summarize and save option and then the options, open options. And then we have a title here which describes what the action is about and the context is where you can right click on the page right so if you go back into the page i can right click anywhere on this page and that menu is always going to be available and that's why it says it all but we can also limit it later on uh, if you want to just limit it to just the page you can also limit it to just show up if you are within a image let's say i'm I'm over on top of this image. I can specify that I just want to limit this context to be available when I'm doing a right click on the image. So that's what the context is for. In our case, we're just set it to all. So it's available anywhere, regardless of where we are on the page. And that's for the first part of this. 
And the second part is kind of setting up some actions. So every time we select one of these options, it's going to go and fire this. Or we're going to go and fire that specific action. So in our case, it's very simple. We're just going to go ahead and trigger uh, the actual pop-up. In our case, we're just going to go ahead and open the pop-up and we're just sending the menu item. So what action uh, did we take? Which action should be open, right? So if you go back, I know that I'm flipping back and forth between the browser, but I just want to make sure that you understand what's going on here. So when I go and right click this and I choose summarize page, it's going to go and it's just like a shortcut to open up this Chrome extension, right? So if I go and right click this and let's say I want to click on the summarize and save, it's going to go and activate that summarize and save. And then if I go and right click this and choose open options, it's going to go and highlight that. Obviously, you can you still have to click on it. That's the part that I, I still want to add into a version two of this Chrome extension before I release it. So that's one of the many things that I still want to work on. But yeah, you can go to any page and right click it and it's just going to open up one of these. So that's going to be pretty simple. Just give you a like a shortcut into the Chrome extension, right? So let's go back in the VS code. So now that we got the manifest, we got the background and then we got the options page. Right. So the last thing that we're going to be tackling is the actual pop up. So we're going to be introducing another file here. We're going to go and introduce pop up .html, and then we're going to go and add pop up. So we want to make sure that we spell this correctly because that's what we have defined in the manifest.js. So when we define the pop up HTML, it has to exist in the root directory of this project. Let's go ahead and tackle the pop up HTML first. Let's go ahead and paste some HTML here. It's a pretty basic HTML. We're also referencing the Tailwind CSS from the CDN from JS Deliver. We're also defining our custom styles here. So we're going to be adding some minimum width and height for the page. So if you go back to the Chrome extension, when you open this up, so right now there's a minimum height and then a minimum width. So that gives you that the default minimum width and height for this Chrome extension. So if you go back into the pop-up, we're also adding uh, some loader uh, styling here. We're adding a spinner. So we're adding some styling for the spinner and also some colors for it, some animations. And then make sure that all the header tags have a font weight of bold. Since those HTML is going to be dynamically in injected into the Chrome extension in the pop-up, we're just styling it manually. The next one is going to be the, for the body. We're just going to add like some padding all around. Uh, and then we're adding some flex, flex column here with the height of full, stretch out the page. I'll make sure we got the full height. So this is a section right here. I know this is quite big. So line 39 up to line 1 to 121 before I, I added that space is going to be where the tabs are. So if you go back into the Chrome extension, you see here from this part right here, it's going to be the, where the gray area is. That's going to be the tab. That's going to be the part of the code for this, right? So that's going to be the tab. It's going to have the uh, summarize page and then they're going to have the tab for summary and save. Each one of these have an SVG. So I think this, this occupies majority of the HTML here. So this is the code that you're going to be copying. If you go into the, if you go to one of these, you're just going to go ahead and copy the SVG. That's the HTML code for the SVG, or it's going to go ahead and copy into that section. This is what, this is what, you're, what you're going to be getting as part of that. And then each of these tab has an identifier. So the first one has a tab dash sum summarize page, and then it has some styling such as the cursor point pointer, and then it has this class of tab, which we're going to be looking into later on. But each one has a tab, an ID, right? Which identifies each tab. And then each of these have an element or an SVG element that's going to give you the icon. And then it's just going to be a span that identifies what that is right summarize and save and then the other one is summarize page and then the last one right here is going to be just the options so this block right here is going to be the tab for open options which has this svg associated with it it's going to have the options label and then right on the bottom is going to be where the things are going to be displayed when we get a response from the webhook uh, this is where we're going to be rendering the content of that summary so each of these tabs have its own a specific area to, for where we're going to be rendering the HTML. So this one is right here for the content for summaries page. And this area right here is for the content for the summaries and save. And then also, if we decide later on that we want to move the options here, we can also move it into this tab. But currently, this one is not being used. And lastly, here in the bottom, 
we're referencing a popup.js, which is what we're going to be using to add some functions as part of this popup.html. So let's go and save this and let's go and switch to popup.js. So first things first is we're going to be adding a flag here on the top. So essentially, this is going to be our marker to let us know that we're making an, an AP request and there's something in progress so that we know what we want to avoid having to make multiple requests to the API or the webhook. And the next one we're going to be adding is we're going to be adding an event listener, which is going to fire when the content of the HTML body has completely loaded. So everything that we add in between here is going to be the function that we're going to be executing. So let's go ahead and take care of the tabs first. Uh, let's go and add a block of code here. So this is the codes to uh, to take care of all the events or the function that we need for the tabs. So when we do a constant of tabs query selector all, we're just gonna grab all the tabs that has a class of that tab. We're just gonna grab each individual tab and then we're just gonna be assigning it into this tabs constant variable. Same thing with the tab content. We also have this tab content. So we go, there's going to be a lot of code here. So tab content is where we're going to be displaying the result later on. So we have the tabs and the tab contents where we're going to be displaying the results. And then we're just going to go ahead and do a dot for each for each tab. And we're assigning an event listener for it. And then we're going to be handling each click. So every time you click on one of the tabs, it's going to go ahead and call this function change tab and also it's going to make an API request and then we're going to be assigning and calling and setting the actions that we're going to be using to perform the API request. So the next one is the changing of the tab. This just assigns a class to that tab. So when you switch to a different tab, so you can see here that uh, whenever you go to a different tab, it, it's going to go and add this gray color to it just to signify that this is the active tab at the moment. It's also going to switch which container it's being shown on the screen. So let's go back to the code. It handles adding this class of background gray of 300. And also by default, it's gonna go ahead and hide uh, inactive tabs, right? And then add this gray 300. So it hides all the tabs and then it adds the background gray of 300 class into the active tab. The next one is we're gonna be adding a function for showing the indicator for the spinner. This is going to be receiving the target element ID. We're, it's, we're going to be adding it inside of this container. So wherever this tab is being processed, we're going to go ahead and insert or the spinner in that section. And then we're going to be setting the inner HTML to this div, which contains this loader, which we, we styled earlier in the beginning. So if we are here, you see that we styled the dot loader. We added some stylings. Obviously, we can add the styles also here in line if you want to, but so we're just centering the image or the spinner into the page and then that spinner uh, goes away because it go gets overridden by the actual uh, summary of the article. So that's going to be the function for showing the pro uh, processing indicator, that's the spinner. The next thing that we're going to be adding here is that we're going to be retrieving the information for each tab when it's loaded. So when we load the tab, it's going to go in and execute and fire this and we're going to be storing each of the article per website in the Chrome storage. And when we open the pop-up, it's going to go ahead and retrieve based on the current URL, because we're going to be using that as a key to retrieve the summary from this key, right? Data dash key. And then if there's a summary, we're going to go ahead and populate the summary content with the information from the key. And we're going to be switching to that tab automatically. So if there's any uh, content available for that particular action, we're going to go and set that into the display. Right. The next thing that we're going to be adding is going to be the callback for the listener. So when we switch tabs and it makes an API request call, it's going to go and make a callback, which we're going to be sending the request and also what action it took to get there. So if we're operating inside of summarized page, after the API request has completed, it's going to go ahead and fire that function. If request that action, it's going to go and switch to that tab and then it's going to go and create a query. So it's going to go and get from the cache. If the action is summarized page, we're just going to go and set the content for that inner HTML for this content. So instead of inner text, we're going to be setting it to inner HTML so that we can properly render the HTML on the screen. Since we're returning an HTML back from the webhook, so we want to make sure that the webhook is returning back an HTML 
for it to work so that's why we're we're converting markdown into html we before we send it back into the client so regardless of what action has been taken we're going to be processing it right so if the request action is a summarized page it's going to go and and set the content for summarized page if the action is summarized and save it's going to go and display the content in this uh, section on the tab and we're going to go ahead and send and sync the data as part of this current url that's where we push all that content into the storage so that later on when we load this pop-up it's going to go and we're going to get it a couple of things here as well after this line after we finish this so we got the event listener the next thing is we're going to be adding some event listener to the tab so this, this is going to be specific to each tab so for the summers in page we're going to be adding a listener that we're going to be making a request to this is probably not going to be necessary since we're adding it to handle here on the top already so we're probably not going to be needing this just to leave i'm just going to go ahead and play with this later on but yeah we're just going to just leave it for now as we have it currently working but essentially it's very similar to what I'm doing here is why I'm already assigning an event listener to click and it's going to go ahead and switch to that tab and then make an API request, right? So it's the same concept here, which so we probably don't need it later on, but let's go ahead and remove it for now since it looks like it's the same thing. But the most important thing here is we're going to be making a request to the API. So this is going to be the function that's going to make a call into the webhook that we've set in the API configuration page. So let's go ahead and break this down. So this function right here at the bottom. So if you go into the event listener here, you can see that after you switch to a tab, it does make a request to the API and specifying the action, right? It calls this function right here at the bottom. It's going to be calling this make API request function, which accepts the action. So you can see here that there's a flag that we're, we're checking if this flag is set to true meaning that there's already an existing pi request that's happening in progress so we're just going to go and return it since we don't want to make multiple requests to the webhook or the api simultaneously the second part is if that's false then we're going to go and continue this or we're just going to set it to true since we we can mark it as say we're ready to make a new request since there's really no request happening at the moment so we're just going to set, set it to true the target element is going to be based on the action. So if the action is summary in page, we're going to be setting the action into summary dash content. Otherwise, it's going to be summarized and save content. As you add more options into this Chrome extension, you probably want to change this one as so it can handle a lot of different actions. But in our case, since we only have two actions, we're just going to go with the ternary where if summary is page, then we're going to go with this type of ID. And then otherwise, it's going to go and we're gonna grab the target element ID as the summary and save content. And then once the make API request happens, we're gonna go and show the processing indicator, which is the spinner that we show on the page. It's already cached, so it's not gonna be making a request anymore, but it's gonna be the spinner that you see on the screen. It's gonna go ahead and process it, and it's gonna add, based on the target element, that's where the spinner is gonna go into the page, right? The interesting parts of this is gonna be we're going to be querying for that tab for this active tab we're going to go ahead and grab the existing tab and we're going to be executing the script so there's multiple parts to this we're specifying the target tab and also the function that we're going to be running against this tab it's going to be accepting the action and the target element id as part of this which passing from the top here um, we're going to be grabbing the content which we're going to be taking the inner text so we're stripping out to all the html tags from the content and we're just straight up just give it the text of the website and then we're also going to be grabbing the document title which is the title to identify where the article is coming from and we're going to be using this title later on when we save it into notion page and after that we're just going to be retrieving the api endpoint so we're going to be going into the storage we're just going to be dynamically just pulling these api endpoint and api key from the storage so we can pass it as part of this api request so if there's no uh, API endpoint or there's no API key, we're just going to go ahead and return it, right? We're going to go ahead and set a message here where the current tab is. And we're just going to go and also send a message as part of the Chrome extension. So if you go back into the Chrome extension, 
the way you can find the errors is if you go to the extension you see here that there's the errors so this errors right here is coming from that specific action right so you can see the type of errors that you're going to be encountering here and that's where you can uh, log it that's what i'm doing here and this once on the top right here is more of on the ui so you can present it to the user that there's something uh, wrong here that we're not going to be proceeding to process this right one thing that i probably want to add here before it returns you probably want to set the is api request equals to false as well so that the indicator is false and i think that's going to be it for now since we're going to be returning it so if there's no key or endpoint as far as the configuration, we're going to go ahead and return it. So there's really no point of executing that API request if those two are not set. So the next one is we're going to be extracting the URL from the current tab. And that's what we're going to be passing in as part of the request. So we're going to be passing in five pieces of information. We're going to be passing in the URL, the title, which is the title of the website, the API key, which is your Straco API key or OpenAI key if you go that route the content, which is the actual content of the website. We're going to be removing all the HTML as part of this, which is just straight up content. And then the action, right? So the action would be either the summarize page or the summarize and save. So those are the two actions that we're going to be specifying here. And we're going to be using this default API from the browser. We're going to be using fetch to make a request. And we're going to be using the data API endpoint that we've set. So whatever webhook or API you've set for the configuration is where we're going to be sending this request and we're going to be um, making a post request. So make sure that any webhook that you specify as the endpoint will accept these five parameters and also accepts a method of post. And then we're going to be sending the content type application of JSON. Uh, if you decide that you want to do add some authorization, obviously you want to add some authorization here and add your API key and so on and so forth. And then in the body, we're going to be st stringifying the post data. We're going to be serializing it and then we're going to be passing it as part of the request. Okay, so that's going to be part of the request. The next part is to handle the response back from the server. So we have some promises here and the callbacks. So the first thing we do is once we get the response back, we're going to go ahead and deserialize it. We're going to grab that JSON from the response and then send it to the next callback, which is the next one right here. So once we, we got the actual JSON body, we're going to go and take the message. So the message is going to be one of the prop that we're, we're going to be sending back as part of the webhook a response. So just make sure that when you make a response from your webhook, it's going to be on this message property, which is going to be the content that we're going to be passing in as part of this send message. And then depending on that, what the target element is, that's where we're going to be setting the result of that webhook response. If in case there's something that happens, so it's a non 200 HTTP response from the server, we're going to go and set the target element to that error message. And then we're also sending a send message into the Chrome extension debugger in the backend. And finally, regardless of what happens, whether it fails or succeed, we're just going to go and set this API request in progress into false. And I believe that's it for this Chrome extension. So it's pretty simple. I mean, obviously it's pretty long. Hopefully it works without this code right here. Let's go ahead and test this out. So let's go ahead and go back to Chrome extension. We're going to go ahead and remove what we have here. So like I, like I said, you have to be in developer mode. So if it's not enabled, you go ahead and enable this. And then you go and load unpack right here. And just going to go and go to the, the folder where the extension is, right? Which in our case, I believe it's inside of this Chrome demo, right? So let's go ahead and set that. Yeah. So Chrome demo, and I'm going to select that folder. If there's any error, you're going to see here that there's going to be some errors, but if there's any missing files, you're going to see the errors immediately. So now it's ready to go. Uh, we can go ahead and close this, but we can just leave it for now. And let's go and click on the extension. You see that once you install that extension, you can see the icon and the name of the extension and we can go and pin it, right? So check, make sure that everything's working. You can go and summarize the page. Let's go ahead and click on the summarize page. Actually, it's probably not going to work since we still have to set the options, right? We haven't set the API endpoint. Let's go and set those up. All right, so let's go ahead and set the API endpoint for late node. This is going to be what we need to make a request. And then we're going to be setting the API key for Straco. And then we're going to go ahead and hit save. 
Once that's done, we can go back into the article, go back to this one right here. So right now, let's go ahead and remove this one right here. Let's just clear all the articles on this page and let's go back into the website. All right, actually, let's go back to let's go to this website. So let's go ahead and and summarize this page where you set the, the options, the key. So it's really been, been populated. The next step is to let's go ahead and test this one for this page and summarize it. All right. So now we're getting the the summary of this page with the key highlights and all that information. One thing that you can also do, see that it's caching it. So every time I click on this one, we don't have to keep repeating and summarizing this page over and over again since it's being cached on this page. So if you go to another page and go into this one, it's empty, right? So we can go ahead and summarize this page as well. And this you give you a summary of this page. So let's go and try summarizing and saving this content. So this one takes a little bit of time, but it should give you more or less the same result as the previous one for what the summary is for this page. So we got the, the summary of this page and we can go back to the other one, summarize and save for this page. So you can do this for like any pages. I mean, you can obviously tweak the prompt. You can see the HTML structure is similar to what the article is about here. Let's go ahead and go to Notion. You see here that I have two articles now here, right? So it goes to the PDF, which should have the same summary output here. Now if save it, and then the next one is right here is for this article. We have the source and then the web capture. Let's go ahead and take a look at the web capture here. Let's go ahead and download it, go ahead and save. And then now we can preview this page. So it's funny because you can see here that it's screenshotting the whole page. So it's quite a long image, but give you an idea here what the article is when it was captured. So yeah, so the Chrome extension works. Let's go ahead and move on into building the late node webhook next. So let's go ahead and walk through the webhook that we're, that we're going to be building shortly in late node. So our trigger is going to be a webhook. That's going to be the trigger for this automation. So we're going to be using late node for this. So we're going to be determining what action they took. So since we're passing in the action and the URL and the API key and all that information, we're going to be determining the action that they took, whether if they want to summarize the page or they want to summarize and save. So we're going to be uh, taking actions depending on what action was passed in as part of the webhook call. And then we're going to be summarizing the website content, regardless of what action they took, we're always going to be summarizing it as we have to respond back into the calling client, which is the Chrome extension. And then after that, we're going to be using markup go to convert the URL that was passed in into an image as a screenshot. And then we're going to be using a markup go again to convert the markdown as the result from summarizing the website content using Straco. We're going to be using the result of that in and convert that markdown into a PDF. And then we're going to be storing the PDF into Google. I didn't add a step here, but we're going to be saving the PDF and image to Google Drive first so that we don't have to worry about the expiration of the hosting in Markup Go. And then we're sending all that link and we're sending the summary and creating a new page inside of Notion. And then we're converting the markdown into HTML and then return it into the Chrome extension as part of the message. So that's what we're building in the late node webhook flow. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a look and, and how to build that. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new scenario here in late node. This is what we're going to be using to send a request to from the Chrome extension. And we're going to be choosing trigger on webhook. And this is going to be the URL that we're going to be needing to use or to set into the extensions options. Let's go ahead and set the API endpoint here and hit save. Now we can go back into late node where we can run this node once. And then this is awaiting a request. Let's go ahead and go back into the article and make a request and summarize this page. And let's switch back to late node. All right, so now we got the body here. So we got the action, which is summarize page. So keep in mind that we have two actions, summarize and save page and summarize page. And then the API key, which is the Straco API key. You can substitute it for OpenAI or Cloud AI, but in this case, I'm just using Straco for the LLM and we're going to be using uh, GPT-4 or Mini. And then we're going to be passing in the content from the website as this content and then the title of the website or article and then the URL. So keep in mind, about the title and the URL. So we're going to be using that later on when we add a new page in Notion. 
So that's going to be that for the payload that we're going to be using in this automation. So we're going to be adding a new node here. We're going to be adding a webhook response. In any case that they didn't pass in any API key, we're just going to send back a 400 HTTP status code response. And then we're going to go and not send anything back in the body. And this is going to be for the invalid response. And we're going to go and hit save. And we only want to execute this particular route if the, uh, the, the API key is invalid. So let's go and add a label here. So invalid API key. And then we're going to go and choose. We're just going to go to empty. If the API key is empty, we're going to go and go to this route. Otherwise, we're going to go to the second one, which is a valid API key. So let's go ahead and take advantage of this new feature by late node, which is AI node, which allows us to create uh, some code or node uh, based on the prompt. Let's go ahead and add a prompt here. So I'd like to make a post request to the endpoint for this tracker right here for the completion, which matches what they got here in the documentation. So you're going to go ahead and navigate to this prompt completion tracker documentation. It will give you the endpoint. We're going to make the request and then the authorization and then the expected body, right? The model, the models and the message. And then the response is going to be the completions. So we're sending that as part of the prompt. So we're going to be specifying the API URL here. It's expecting these two parameters, which is I'm hard coding the models here and then the message. And then we're also going to be uh, supplying the API key. So the API key is also an input parameter and will be passed in as an authorization bearer token. And then the response will be in the data completions within this GPT-40 mini completion choices and message. And then the code will return that message. Let's go ahead and generate this. All right. So once it's done, let's go ahead and check it out and let's go to full screen. So you can see here that the API key has been created and then the message has also been created. So two custom parameters have been generated for us and then doing an import from Axios, which we're going to be using to make a request to the completion endpoint from Straco. All right. We're making HTTP method of post. And then we're passing in the data, the API key, which we're going to be passing it right here. Let's go ahead and set this up by switching to tools. And then we're actually, we have to link these ones first before we can we have access to those two, two information. We're going to set the API key. And now we can go and grab the API key and then the message. So the message is a prompt I've defined here. Let's go ahead and add this. So act as a professional summarizer and create a concise and comprehensive summary of the provided text, be an article, post, conversation, or passage. Adhere to the following guidelines to ensure the highest quality summary. And then this entire prompt right here, which you can have to create a summary using Markdown. The summary should start with a header, title, key highlights, followed by a list of key points. And for each key point, include an H2 heading, following by a paragraph providing an in-depth explanation of that point. And then at the bottom, here's the text for a summarization. And then we're passing in the body or the content of the body, which is coming from the webhook request, right, which is here. So if we remove this, we can go ahead and supply the content. And then let's go ahead and go to full screen. Just to keep it simple, as I think that should probably work. Yeah, this one should work. Let's hit save on this one. And let's go and rename this summarize web website using Straco and hit save. And let's go ahead and execute this. This should work. Cross fingers. All right. So it says server code 500 uh, error. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on. All right. Let's go ahead and just return the data instead of going through these route. Let's go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and run it again. All right. So now it gave us an output. We might have to let's go ahead and refresh this. We have to run this again. Let's go back here and summarize page go back to late node go back to body now we got the body now we can execute this run node once so now we get the message the data and the completions so now we're good all right so let's go ahead and move on to the next one so we want to send this summary back into the client which is the chrome extension but before we do that since it's in markdown format let's go ahead and convert this into html so we don't have to worry about converting the markdown into HTML when we get to the Chrome extension. Let's go ahead and actually add a, another AI node here. I have a prompt that we're going to be using for this. 
So it's going to be a simple one. I want to build a markdown to HTML and then give me a code that converts a markdown to HTML that will be returned from that function. So let's go ahead and there's this new late note feature, which allows you to attach a node to each other by just getting it close to each other, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and add that. And then let's go and actually inspect this. What's going on here? It's expecting a markdown content, which we can then link from the previous response from straight go all right so the html is here now we can go and send it back into the client so now there's going to be a webhook response again so we got invalid response here and then we have a valid response here let's go ahead and name this to valid response and this is going to be a 200 status and we're just going to go and pass in back a message so it's going to be a message property and that we're going to be passing it the the html from the previous step we hit save so that's going to be that for that route. And then uh, one thing that we also need to take care of. So this is this will handle the summary. But if you want to also summarize and save, we're going to have to take care of the summary uh, and save action. So right now it's working. When we hit summarize page, it's going to go and return this response. But we also want to handle the summarize and save when the user clicks on it. So let's go ahead and tackle the summarize and save action. So right now, regardless of what happens, we're always going to send back the response to the requesting client, so, such as the Chrome extension. So, so after it's been converted to HTML and, and the response has been sent, we want to go ahead and tackle the summarize and save. So when we go back into one of the articles here, if they click on summarize and save, it's going to go and, and save that uh, summary into the notion page so let's go ahead and tackle that part of it so let's go ahead and take advantage of this ai node here again and we're going to be passing it the url and so we're going to be creating an image based on that url so we're going to be doing a screenshot so i have a prompt here that we're going to be using so it's based on this image from url here we're going to be creating an image based on that url as a screenshot so I'd like to make an API request. The input would be the API key and the markdown content. And then the base URL is this, and then the body took the request here. So it understand what we're trying to do. And then the response looks like the one below, which is it took the one right here. So it knows what type of response we're expecting from it, right? So in this case, it gives us the format and the actual URL, which we're gonna be using. So that's going to be that. And let's go ahead and generate this. So once it's been added, let's go and grab it. So let's go ahead and add it to the top portion. But we'd only want to run into this node if the action is summarized and saved. Let's go ahead and add some logic here for the filter. So we're going to name this summarize and save. And we're going to only run it if the body action equals summarize and save. So this part of the node is going to be executed only if the condition is satisfied here. In this one, we're going to be naming it URL to image. And then the API key, I'm just going to go ahead and hard code this since we're not really going to be changing this a whole lot. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the API key here. The markdown content will be coming from step three here. Let's go ahead and go to the markdown content. Actually, we're expecting the image URL. So let's go ahead and modify this. Go ahead and switch this to URL, provide the URL image, and then it's going to be posting. The API key is going to be provided here. And then this is going to be, I believe, let's see here, what I have. data is going to be the URL. I think everything else is the same response to data. Okay. So the image is correct. The post uh, API key is being added here. We made a little bit of changes and then URL content. Then this one has to be the key has to be also your else so has to match this let's go ahead and generate params and then now we can pass in the url of the website which is going to be passed it right here let's go ahead and save this and then now we can go and run this we've got the url here which is the link to where the screenshot is let's go and close this real quick the next step is we're converting the markdown into pdf let's go and add an ai node here again and it's going to be, I'd like to make an API request. The input would be the API key in the markdown content. And the base URL is this URL here, which we took from here. We're going to go ahead and go to the PDF section of this. And then we're going to be 
using this from Markdown. So I literally just took the request here and then the response, and that's going to be part of the prompt that I'm providing here. And then the response looks like the one below, and it's going to be actually going to be a PDF. And then the Markdown here, I think this seems to be correct image. Actually, let's go ahead and change that one to this. It'll be this. And then we want the Markdown content and we want the API key. Let's go ahead and generate this. Okay, it's been successful. Add it here. And we can call this Markdown to PDF. And then the API key is going to be, we're just going to go ahead and hard code this as well. Let's go ahead and it's safe for now. Let's go ahead and link this together. And then we're going to be passing in the Markdown content, which is coming from this content right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And let's go ahead and run this node once. All right, so that should give us the URL to the PDF. So now we got the PDF and the image. Now we can go and save this into Google Drive. Like I previously mentioned, I set up this folder inside of my Google Drive main drive. So underneath the My Drive, I have this articles and knowledge folder, which is going to be deploying anything that has a screenshot on it. It's going to be appended with this dash screenshot and then PDF going to be dash PDF. So I can easily identify it. So let's go ahead and look for Google Drive. And we're going to go and upload file and we're going to go and uh, choose this account I already authorized this let's go ahead and pick that account and it's using my drive and we're picking the knowledge or articles and knowledge base and the file url here is we're processing the pdf first so let's go ahead and upload a pdf let's name this upload to pdf and this is linked into step 8 url and then we're not going to specify the file path we're just going to go and use the title of the article and then we're going to be adding a uh, dash PDF here. So if you notice, go back into the file namings here. You notice that I, I'm adding a dash PDF here, along with the article title. And then we're going to go ahead and select the application uh, PDF for the MIME type. And uh, we're just going to leave the upload type as is. And uh, let's go ahead and run this once. And that should add a new. Uh, actually, I should probably remove some of these first before doing that just to not get confused. Let's go and go back to late node, run this one again. So now we added the file. So you should have the file right here. The next one is we want to retrieve the file so we can get the name. So for some reason, when you click on the output, it's not returning the actual ID of that file. So let's go ahead and add a step here for Google Drive, add a node, and we're going to be searching for Google Drive again. And we're going to be looking for find file. So we're going to go and look for get PDF meta. We're going to choose that same account and we're going to be that I have linked same process. We're going to be doing a search using the name and also we're going to be using dash PDF to be consistent. And now we can go and hit run. And now that should give us actually it looks like it's cache, but it's going to go ahead and give us the content of that Google Drive. Let's go ahead and execute this again. Just in case output is missing for some reason. All right, let's go ahead and con keep continuing. Wait, did it? Let's go ahead and copy and paste. And we're going to go ahead and change this to upload image or screen. And then we're just going to change this to screenshot. And we're going to be changing this to uh, PNG. And that's going to be that. And then the next one is we're going to be copying this guy and we're pasting it here. And then we're going to link this together and get screenshot meta and this is a screenshot we get the result actually we didn't we didn't execute this one so we're gonna go ahead and run this node once first so we got interesting it looks like the id is being returned here well i guess we don't need this thing right here now since we got the id so the result is here it's the id so we don't need the second part we might not even need this then save us some time let's go ahead and the next one will be adding to that notion page we're just going to go and this is the last step right here let's go and add a notion and we're creating a new page let's go and create a new page already let's go and choose the account and we're choosing website summaries and then the page title is that we're going to be using summary for and then we're going to go back all the way down into the body which we're going to be grabbing the title of the article the page content is where we're going to be soaring the actual markdown right 
let's go ahead and apply and go back here and set the content and then towards the bottom we're just going to go and say uh, for the pdf it's going to be linked to this url with the google drive and then the website capture or screenshot we're going to go ahead and supply that information and also the source url so this one's the easiest one since we can go and go back to the original color and pass in the url and then the pdf is going to be the url for the pdf we're going to be using this format right here to actually view the file from google drive so it's https forward slash forward slash drive dot google dot com and then slash file slash d and then the file id that's inserted between the d and the view so that's where we're including the id for the file id so let's go and go into step nine i believe yep we can get the id and then it's going to be appended as far as this url and then we're going to be doing the same thing for the website screenshot except that yeah for the screenshot we're going to be using the step 11 instead so we're going to go and append id so now we're going to have the pdf the website screenshot and the search url along with the markdown content for this and we're just going to go and rename this to add notion summary to notion and it's save for now and let's go and run once so let's go back into notion i believe this is the last one right here maybe i should include some dates so now that should open up the pdf okay so after it's been saved to notion that's pretty much terminates the whole automation process so if you like this type of content please go ahead and hit subscribe and go ahead and click like on this video if you have any suggestions of what type of video you want to see in the future please go ahead and leave it down in the comments. Like always, I'll see you guys on the next video.